it's time for live action Scooby-Doo movie reviews. Sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Starting with Scooby-Doo. If someone asked me, gee, what was it like to be alive in the early 2000s? I would say nothing, and instead aggressively shove a VCR copy of this in their direction. For some insight on what I was like as a child, my mother got me a small video camera for my birthday, and the very first thing I did was attempt a shot-for-shot -shot remake of this movie. This may not be a great movie, but that's because Shaggy is only using 5% of his power. If he used all of his power, then this would be a movie so incomprehensibly powerful that the human mind would not be able to process it. Shaggy's omnipotence may create the best viewing experience in history, but we would simply combust trying to understand what we had witnessed. Shaggy is God. Shaggy and Scooby have the same bond as dads do with their dog after rejecting the idea of getting a dog for multiple years. Hear me out. This might be the best casting for any adaptation of anything, ever. Fred's ascot in the TV show was the coolest thing ever. I always wanted to put it in my mouth and suck on it. Fred's ascot in this movie was bullshit. I want my money back. It's official. I'm moving to Spooky Island. Mentally, I'm at Spooky Island getting my soul stolen. The scene where their protoplasms keep changing bodies is one of the most iconic scenes in the history of cinema, and you can't tell me otherwise. I know you. All you care about are swimsuit models. No! Look, I'm a man of substance. Dorky chicks like you turn me on too. This is a kid's movie. Velma is upsettingly hot in this. This movie brainwashed me to be attracted to narcissistic men like Fred and stoners like Shaggy. A fun and very true fact about this film that will never cease to amaze me. This motion picture right here was originally given an R rating by the MBAA. The way Velma stands, elbows all out and stuff is the most distracting thing about this movie, and I hate it so much. Daphne is proof that go-go boots give you an unspeakable amount of power. These five stars are unironic, and yes, I know the demons look worse than the 2001 Harry Potter PlayStation graphics. Why are animals with kinda bad CGI always the cutest? Scrappy-Doo being revealed to have been Emil Montverius all along belongs in top 10 anime betrayals. Can you believe the other day I watched a video of the 100 most iconic movie lines, and Velma's let's get jinky with it didn't even get an honorable mention. Nobody's ever given me a stuffed dismembered head before. Move aside before trilogy. This is what real romance looks like. Velma and Fred literally have the most chemistry until BAM! The way Fred looks at Daphne before he kisses her. Who cares if they set it up to where it looks like the only reason they got together was because they're both the hottest members of the group. Still my OTP. I hope in a million years, when modern society has collapsed and the octopi take over the earth, this is the only part of our society to survive. Now before we go on to the next movie, I want to help you out. Maybe after this video you are planning on going on Netflix and searching for Scooby-Doo for a fun movie night, only to sadly realize that it's not there. That's where our sponsor comes in, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a virtual private network that keeps your online identity secure by encrypting all the information sent between your devices and the internet, keeping it safe from any thieves or evil corporations who want to use it without your permission. VPNs also change your IP address, keeping your location private, and letting you virtually travel around the world. That means you can trick websites like Netflix into thinking you're in a different country. I can't watch Scooby-Doo in America, but if I use a Canadian server, hey look, I can! This will save me a lot of money on plane tickets. Or maybe you don't have Netflix and use some shadier sites for your movie nights instead. It's okay, you can admit it, because Surfshark VPN helps you browse the internet safely by blocking ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts. So you can feel comfortable knowing that you can click links without your identity being stolen by ghosts or men in masks. And Surfshark VPN is giving my viewers a great deal. With my link in the video description, you can get 83% off plus 3 extra months free. Jinkies, that's impressive. So please, check out the link below. And now, we'll get back to the Scooby-Doo reviews. With Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed. I have literally been held at knife point in the woods before, and I felt more unsafe watching this movie in my own home tonight than I did in the woods that day. A holiday classic! The visual effects are so great, I 
had to Google it, but it turns out that was a CGI dog. I literally cannot rate this because it's simultaneously the best and worst movie I've ever seen. Alicia Silverstone gaslights Mystery Inc. for 90 minutes. This is an anti-cancel culture movie. Funny how this features the best dance number in a movie ever. Nah, because why did everyone at the club not realize it was Scooby-Doo the second he walked in? Like, I understand Shaggy, but Scooby? How many other talking dogs do you know, idiots? Get your eyes checked. We're gonna die! Think positive! We're gonna die quickly! Would give 10 stars, if possible. That one scene where Daphne uses blush and a pore strip to cheat the thumbprint scanner. I enjoy being a girl. Iconic. Daphne Blake really goes around wearing a shirt with her own face on it, and I think we all deserve to love ourselves that much. Buff Shaggy be like, Shaggy didn't even care when his body turned into a woman's body, and Scooby, a male dog, wearing Daph and Velma's clothing? Ugh, we love warriors without toxic masculinity. I was obsessed with those skeleton twins as a kid. Like, if there was a thing made with just them doing stupid stuff, I'd probably give it five stars with little regret. But we gotta make, like, your personality and split. Name a more iconic line. Seth Green looks like a combination of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, and then someone chopped his legs off. Can't believe they didn't call it Scooby 2. I could eat this movie. Like, I think it would be a delicious jello. My favorite part about this movie is that there's a post credit scene where Scooby gives you a secret code for the Game Boy Advance game. Scooby Doo, the mystery begins. The forgotten Scooby Doo live action. And for good reason, to be honest. This movie shook me to my core. Hoodie Scooby Doo, vice principal in a dog cage. They live in Ohio. Thumbs down. For real, one of the best Scooby Doo adaptations, but you all are clearly not ready to talk about that. Nick Pilates is Shaggy, the sexiest, cutest, most boyfriend Shaggy ever. Why are they all so mean to Shaggy? He's literally the best person. Love how the rest of the gang just have hints of their signature color in their outfits, except for Velma, who is dressed head to toe in bright orange. Scooby Doo is both the worst and best part of this movie. He ruins the pacing of the unintended comedy almost any time he's on screen, but his animation was so hilariously out of place that we had to screenshot like five shots. It really says something about your Scooby Doo movie when Scooby himself is more terrifying than any of the monsters. A disgrace of a film that should never have been funded or seen the light of day. That's an hour and 22 minutes of my life that I'm not going to get back. For the love of God, don't waste your time on this like I did. I gotta say, props to Scooby's voice actor, Frank Welker, for sticking with this franchise even at its worst. All to voice this dumb animated dog. This off-brand, apparently official Scooby-Doo film is horrifying. Scooby's cold, dead eyes forged in the blue flames of the uncanny valley will never leave me. Non-blonde Fred is a crime. The ending where they recreated the intro to the show? Nostalgia at its finest. Felt like reviving the dead was an unnecessary step to the villain's plan, but okay, I respect the hustle. Questions and comments. The bad guy was an actual necromancer? What do you do with that? Put him in prison? Is it even illegal to raise the dead? I really like how the motive of the criminal was super Scooby-Doo. The only difference being he is an actual necromancer. And at one point, it seriously looked like Velma, Freddy, and Daphne left Shaggy and Scooby to die in a burning building. I was shook. Unrealistic principle and plotline, but the villain's major want mean an old stamp. How flirty and fun. I always knew only psychopaths collect stamps. I cannot say this film is good, but I cannot say that this doesn't have a place in my heart. Scooby-Doo, Curse of the Lake Monster. The worst live-action Scooby-Doo film, but it often feels like it's the truest to the franchise. Where is Scooby? Significant lack of dog. This is a direct ripoff of High School Musical 2, and that's not even a joke. Honestly, this is the perfect Valentine's Day movie. 
garbage. I remember watching this when I was nine, and the Shaggy and Velma romance subplot made me so enraged I had to leave the room. I was vocal enough about my disdain for Shaggy and Velma kissing that my mom yelled, What happened? from the other room. Velma and Shaggy's kiss helps them discover their true identities as gay and ace. I guess we're all just better off being friends. I mean, yeah, but then what was the point of any of this? This movie invented toxic relationships and heteronormativity. This movie scared me so much as a kid that I cried and begged my dad to destroy the disc in front of me. Redeemed itself for a split second with the theater sequence, and then instantly went downhill again when they turned it into a funny rock song. God, I just know most of the budget for this movie went into those multiple performance montages. The end music video where Scooby is wearing human clothes and has a human-shaped body is terrifying. The ending rap should be the national anthem. Of every country. This movie is not very good, but it has my favorite cryptid, Frogmen. So I feel compelled to rate it at least average. Daphne and Velma. This is a Wattpad Scooby-Doo fanfiction written by a second grader. Spooky theremin music, Suspiria lighting, and a plot about hypnotic frequencies radiating from your smartphone. A wonderful movie. Jinkies. I haven't seen Pulp Fiction yet, but have you seen Daphne and Velma? That's what I thought. Who's the real film buff now, pussy? This is one of the most infuriating things I've ever seen. My body had some sort of weird reaction to this as I was watching it. Like it was rejecting it or something. Why is Velma annoying? Haha, <laughs> Velma is me. Oh, shit. I had to call it quits when Velma went statistically for the thousandth time 13 minutes in. This is unwatchable. Kicked out of the cinema for pointing at Velma and yelling, That's me! Too many times. Carol was really criticizing Daphne's clothes while wearing that outfit. Okay. This film is just an insult to Daphne and Velma. What was up with Velma's hair? I can't believe this movie invented dialogue. I don't really care what I do when I grow up. I just want to be like a really good dad, you know? Dude, you will be the best dad. Sometimes I wish you were my dad. <laughs> <laughs> a stunning take on male friendships and putting an end to toxic masculinity. I'm sure that guy would be a wonderful father. I don't care what anyone says. I love genius STEM girlfriends. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want me to ever do animated Scooby-Doo movies, there are a ton of them. So I can definitely do that sometime in the future. Just let me know in the comments. And again, there's that link in the description if you want to get that great deal on Surfshark VPN. VPNs are a very helpful tool for navigating the internet. And I wouldn't share it with you if I didn't think it was worth your time. Thank you all again, and I will see you in the next video.